Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to do something pretty cool, I would say. So I consider it to be quite cool. We are going to derive all the trig, the trigonometric identities, cosine, cotangent, tangent, whatsoever, as infinite products. So that's what we are going to derive today. So it's going to be quite cool. The cool thing about multiplication products is that we can take the reciprocal and end up with something really nice. So deriving the Taylor series for the cotangent, stuff like this, is not an easy feat in normal case. But deriving the infinite product identities is actually quite easy. And you know the cool thing about trigonometric functions and even hyperbolic functions is that we can basically express all of those using just a sign right here and this really actually helps because we already derived kind of rigorously the infinite product for the sign and now we can do so for the cosine, cotangent etc. Today we are just going to deal with the trig functions but maybe I'm going to make a video on the hyperbolic functions as well. So at first we would like to derive the cosine because once we know the cosine we also know what the tangent is and then what the cotangent is and whatsoever. So yeah we are going to dive right in. So at first let's take a look at the cosine and how we can actually express it using the sine function only. Okay? So if you take a look at the cosine of x, what exactly is that? Well. I would like to make use of the double angle formula right here. I would like to ad advance this thing right here, expand this cosine of x by two times the sine of x over two times the sine of x. Okay, so two times the cosine of x times the sine of x over two times the sine of x. Like I said, we are going to play around with the double angle formula. This up here in the numerator is nothing but the sine of two times x over 2 times the sine of x. And you see the really cool thing about infinite products is that you can take the reciprocal and you are still going to end up with this nice pi notation right here. So you can basically collect all those terms in a nice little pi notation and it's going to look pretty cool in the end. It's not like with Taylor series when you have 1 over an infinite sum it's not going to turn out to be anything nice most of the time. Maybe you are going to end up with Bernoulli not. Bernoulli, Bernoulli numbers whatsoever. I'm terribly sorry. I'm being a uh, speech retarded here. I shouldn't say retard. People don't like when I say retard. Um, I'm being speech mentally disabled right here. So we are going to make use of the sine of x definition and plug it into here. Okay, so instead of x we are going to make use of 2x right here. So plugging 2x into here leaving us with 2x in front and also 2x squared right here. Okay, just follow me along. So at first we are going to have 2 times x infinite product from 1 to infinity of 1 minus like I said 2x squared is nothing but 4 times x squared over pi squared k squared. And this whole thing over 2 times sine of x is nothing but 2 times this chunk and you see already something is going to cancel out namely this and that right here and then pi notation our infinity grill no the, the improper integral is the infinity grill this right here is the infinity gugina okay that's the infinity gugina of 1 minus x squared over pi squared k squared like I said, the cool thing about the pi notation is basically you can write this out and all of those terms are just to the negative 1th power. So you can bring this negative 1th power to the top, to the numerator and just collect all those terms again using the pi notation. We're not going to do this right here because we want to do something different. So you see, right here it doesn't look any good at the moment. So it doesn't look like anything would cancel out in the process. But we can basically do better than that. Okay, so we can actually expand this infinite product up here such that we can actually collect terms once again. How can we do this? Well, if you write this thing right here out, okay, this is also cancelled out, this 2x. If you were to write this out, you would have, well, k being equal to 1 and then k being equal to 3, 5, blah, blah, blah. Also, you would have the even terms 2, 4, 6, etc. What we can basically do, we can drag the limit as for example n approaches infinity to the front under the condition that this thing actually converges to something. It does converge actually. It should even converge absolutely because 
This thing is equivalent to the Taylor series expansion and on its radius of convergence, which is infinity. For our sine of x, it does converge absolutely and uniformly. So what I want to say here is that we can track the limit to the front. Then we just have finitely many terms consisting of odd and even terms. We can rearrange those odd and even terms, meaning we can take the infinite product then of all the even terms times the infinite product of all the odd terms. Okay? Meaning, we are going to end up with, at first, from k equals to 1 to infinity of, I'm going to put this in parentheses right here. All the even terms are nothing but 1 minus 4x squared over pi squared. Even terms consist of 2 times k right here, okay? 2 times k squared times, okay? Now we are going to go for the odd terms. So this is the infinite product of 1 minus 4 x squared over, okay, this is pi squared once again, and our odd terms are nothing but, well, 2k plus 1 of this form, okay? Kind of. If we would start with 2k plus 1 right here, and we would start at k being equal to 1, well, we would end up with the first term being equal to 3. You can make this infinite product start at 0, or you can let it start at 1 and say we are expressing all the odd terms as nothing but 2k minus 1, okay? So this is 2k minus 1 squared over this whole chunk that we have right here, over this infinite product. I'm going to write it out in a second. At first, I would like you guys to notice something. If we square this right here, we are going to end up with 4 times k squared. This 4 and this 4 is going to cancel out. And now I want you guys to recognize something. This infinite product that we have right here, running from k equal to 1 to infinity, is nothing but the same thing we have right here in the denominator. Meaning this and that is actually going to cancel out and all that's really left for our cosine is this right here. Meaning our cosine of x is now nothing but our infinite product of, okay, this is 1 minus 4x squared over, okay, this is 2k minus 1 squared times pi squared. And you can take the heuristic approach to this whole thing, just like we did with um, Euler and the basal problem for the sine of x, and you are basically going to arrive at our boy, the cosine of x, by just taking a look at, well, all those zeros that we have. So on all the um, 2k plus 1 times pi over 2s, okay, so. Yeah, this should do. Yeah, this should be okay. Um, those should be all the zeros. And then you are basically done. So you can just take the Weierstrass um, theorem or you can go for the sine of t times x Fourier series expansion and just go for the whole thing where you derive the Fourier series expansion for the um, tangent and stuff like this. So no matter what you do, you are basically going to end up with this thing right here. Now we are going to derive the rest of all of this. So the tangent, cotangent, blah, blah, blah. So one of the main reasons why I let the index on the cosine run from one instead of zero, so changing this from 2k plus one to 2k minus one, was solely that we can actually collect terms in this pi notation on our tangent and cotangent. Meaning we are going to go for the tangent now at first. So our tangent of x, generally speaking, so on the unit circle, etc., it's nothing but the sine of x over the cosine of x. And well, you might have guessed already, we are just going to divide this term by this term and see what we actually get. So this is going to give us x times the pi notation. 1 minus x squared over pi squared k squared over, okay, once again, pi notation from k being equal to 1 to infinity of 1 minus 4x squared over pi squared times 2k minus 1 squared. You can't really simplify this thing too much. So what you can do, you can collect terms by bringing the pi notation to the front. That's something you can do and you can basically advance those fractions right here. So up here, we would actually get, okay, when we advance this, this is nothing but pi squared 
um, times k squared minus x squared over pi squared k squared. And down here, what you're going to get is basically just pi squared, 2k minus 1 squared minus 4x squared over pi squared, 2k minus 1 squared. Okay, and the thing is, this pi squared and this pi squared is going to cancel out when dividing everything, okay? But this is all you can really do. So then you can take the reciprocal of this thing right here, drag this to the numerator, and then you are basically done. So that's all you really can simplify. I don't know if you can actually collect, once again, odd and even terms and cancel something out. I'm leaving this as a little exercise to the viewer. So tell me in the comments if this is the case. I didn't really try this out, but maybe that's uh, something you can actually do. So our tangent is nothing but x times pi notation from 1 to infinity of, like I said, taking the, the reciprocal 2k minus 1 squared times pi squared k squared minus x squared over. Okay, then you are going to get k squared and then, okay, um, pi squared 2k minus 1 squared minus 4x squared. Okay. This is all you can basically do. Like I said, maybe you can actually write this out because down here you are going to get odd and even terms overall. So maybe you can cancel out. It's like a um, uh, telescoping product right here. I don't know. Try it out for yourself. This right here is our tangent and we are going to move right on to the cotangent. Okay. So the cotangent of x is nothing but 1 over the tangent of x. Like I said, we are going to take one over this thing right here. But, like I said before, you can basically just write all those terms out. Those are then just to the negative one power, meaning you can take the reciprocal of the thing, collect all the terms using the pi notation once again, and then you are done. So the cotangent should basically be one over x times the pi notation, our infinity good china. And then you are going to get k squared. This is pi squared. 2k minus 1 squared minus 4x squared over and then all the other stuff. So 2k minus 1 squared pi squared k squared minus x squared. Okay, coolio, this right here should be our cotangent. The rest is pretty straightforward from here out on. So then for the sine of x, if we take the reciprocal of this thing, so 1 over the sine of x, we all know that this doesn't make any sense linguisti linguistically speaking. I don't know why they do this, but this thing right here is called the cosecant of x and it's just one over this thing right here, meaning it's going to give us one over x times this chunk and then we are basically going to get, okay, you can collect terms. Once again here, uh, you can expand this fraction basically. Um, yeah, you are going to get, okay, if you take the reciprocal, this is pi squared k squared over and then we are going to get pi squared k squared minus x squared. So yeah, this right here should be our cosecant if I'm not mistaken. And then for the just simply secant, which is nothing but 1 over the cosine of x, we are going to get this thing but the reciprocal. So k being equal to 1 to infinity. Of. Once again, we can expand fractions right here, leaving us with pi squared. Um, no, this is actually 2k minus 1 squared over um, pi squared 2k minus 1 squared minus 4x squared. And this is basically it. This is more of a complementary video. I just wanted to make a little video on this. And you see, you are basically going to end up with pretty nice expressions. So. This is something really cool. So this is something you can't really do with Taylor series. Um, you can kind of see in Taylor series where it's going, but you, most of the time for the cotangent, for example, you don't really know what the coefficients are going to be. And for the tangent, for example, you are going to end up with the Bernoulli numbers kind of. So yeah, this is something I may be going to make a video on. It's part of analytic number theory and they are really quite important, those Bernoulli numbers. But up until that point, I thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and recommend channel if you like. If you want to support channel a bit more, buy those t-shirts I created 
or do some other things. I really don't know. No matter what you do, I thank us for watching and yeah, have a flammable day. See ya.